Welcome back to our morning show on WRCO Radio. We're pleased to have in the studios members of Richland Center Police Department, Elizabeth Deidelhoff, who's an officer with the PD, and Jared Wilson, community service officer as well. We've talked a little bit about him recently and a chance to chat with him in person today. Uh, good morning, Elizabeth. Uh, good to see you here today. Yeah, it's good to be out. You have a program that, that you like to talk about that's coming up. Yeah, so um, the PEAT program is what we're calling it, and it's Police Education Addiction and Tools. Uh, formerly known as the Counteract Program in the school. We're just um, re... Uh, organizing it, restructured it a little bit, and are hoping that through that we are able to engage with the students a little bit easier um, with more of uh, hands-on type learning through um, Jeopardy style games and um, group interaction and fun worksheets and no homework. So that's always a good thing, right? Nobody wants to take homework home. Yeah, right. Now, is this uh, at all area schools? So it's here in the Richland District. So we'll be teaching the sixth grade students at the intermediate school. And then we're going to um, teach at St. Mary's as well. What are some things that, uh, that you talk about in the program? Uh, right. So we talk about um, drug identification. You know, um, sometimes we don't always know what the kids know. Uh, so uh, the first week we primarily talk about um, drug ID. So we have a bunch of um, pictures that we've put together through different case files that we have um, through um, the police department. And we're able to use that as educational material to help the kids maybe recognize it if they see it. And it, maybe it's not in their home, but somewhere else. And to teach them, you know, what are some, you know, uh, side effects of using, you know, tobacco and alcohol and, and illegal drugs and knowing the difference between them. Um, we're also going to talk about, um, like addiction this year and how you can be addicted to things like sugar and caffeine and things that they would maybe consume on a more regular basis. Oh, okay. So not just illegal stuff. It's right. a little bit of everything. Yep. Then. I see. Um, that, uh, you know, in drugs in terms of that, that certainly changed. Uh, what may have been popular back in the eighties is certainly different than it is right now. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, uh, we want to get into the school and educate them so that they can, I guess, learn some skills to le um, make good decisions. And, you know, like peer pressure is a big thing that we see. I mean, peer pressure is everywhere, even as adults. You know, are you going to are you going to go out every night or are you going to stay in with your family? You know, those are things that we as adults might see. And the kids, you know, are you going to participate in an extracurricular activity like a sporting event or are you going to go hang out at the park and do things that might not be good decisions? Why sixth grade? Is that kind of the, the proper age, the right age to do it? Yeah, so we it, with the Counteract program, we were teaching at the fifth grade level because that's when the transition starts to happen um, as far as between the grades. So from middle school, uh, primary school to middle school was the fifth grade level. And now because the intermediate school is sixth grade and they're moving into the the other building at seventh grade, we chose to move the age group up so that we could... Um, hit them before they get into high school. Uh, we might see some of that stuff in the intermediate school uh, as far as, you know, maybe some tobacco use or things like that because they communicate with each other um, as far as age-wise that, you know, they, they commingle with each other what, even if they're in different schools because of siblings or outside events like sporting events or things like that. So we wanted to be able to hit them and educate them um, before before they get up there so that if they were to see something, they would at least be able to maybe recognize it and maybe tell a responsible adult, like a teacher or um, Sierra Wilson or whoever else they might see. Kids are exposed to a lot more online, too, these days, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They definitely are. So some things to talk about there and some things to, to look forward and maybe make aware of and, and then some things that they can talk to their parents about then, I understand? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a, a pamphlet that we're going to send home with the students um, with some parent involvement. It's a pamphlet with how to talk to your kids about, you know, marijuana use or alcohol use or uh, tobacco use and if they see a change in behavior in their child, um, either it might be stress from school or it could be from maybe uh, using or interacting with a different crowd or using something that 
they wouldn't normally, I guess, allow in their home. Uh, so they can kind of spitball some of those ideas, get some education on how to communicate with them. And um, we we ask that the parents do take a little time and go through, there's a little bitty like QR code on each week to just scan it, take a look at it. If they have questions, they can reach out to me or uh, CRO Wilson, who's going to be in the school with me and teaching the program. Hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that somebody that young, a sixth grader or fifth grader, might be exposed to something that, or might even be using you know, mm-hmm. something. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I truly do, do think it, you know, it does depend on the positive influences that they have in their life. Mm-hmm. And one of those is us. We want to educate them and show them that, you know, you can, you can make good decisions for yourself. And that's one of the reasons that we do the program is so that we can build a positive relationship with the students in the community. And hopefully, you know, if something were to happen, they would be, be able and willing to come forward and, have us help them. Okay. Jared Wilson in the studio as well. Good morning, Jared. I, I said that at the outset. We've, we've talked about you, and now we can talk to you face-to-face. So good to have you here in the studio today. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. And uh, so you've started a new role this year, uh, community service officer. I guess explain that and give us a little job description. Yeah, so community resource officer position was um, started over the last year or so, and I, I was selected um over the summer, midsummer, it's definitely a change from what I had been doing on patrol. Um, I was the night sergeant for a few years as well, but I need to commend the school board, city council, uh, school administration, and, and police department administration for creating this position. A um, few reasons why, such as maintaining safety and security of all buildings from active threats, um, establish a positive relationship with students, parents, and staff and then reducing offenses committed by juveniles by being present. So being present on a, on a normal day, trying to get there um, as students are getting off the bus and, and saying hello, good morning to everyone and, and just being there to deter maybe some bad decisions. How's it gone so far? I think it's gone very well. Uh, the school district has been very welcoming to me, which I, I definitely appreciate. Uh, as well as the students. Uh, luckily, I haven't had any swirlies yet or anything uh, on me, so that's, that's a plus. That'd take more than one, I think, to do that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, it's it's been very good, very good. Uh, you know, I think one of the advantages we talked about with some of the school officials is the fact that you're there, um, but not like as a, a scare tactic, so to speak. I mean, you're, you're there, I mean, you know, to develop some of those relationships. And I'm sure you've already been able to do that, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. And, and being a positive role model, you know, instilling the values that I stand for, like in, integrity, respect, responsibility, and 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 being there for, for students maybe who don't have that role model in their lives. And and I want to be approachable. I don't want to be scary. I want, I want uh, students to come to me if they have, are having issues. It's very important in this role. How many days a week are you at the, the school? So I'm there uh, Monday through Friday, um, 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., <clears throat> and my hours may change depending on, on maybe what's going on. Um, so during the school year, that's, that's where I am, that's, and I'm, I'm there every day. But uh, during the summertime then with school out, uh, I'll be back on patrol for the police department. Okay. So do you float between the schools? It isn't just the high school, right? Correct. Yep. So there are four buildings, uh, the high school, the intermediate, primary, and then we do have that uh, additional charter school for alternative learning. I try to get down to the other buildings as much as possible um, a couple times a week. It doesn't always happen if I you know, have things going on at the high school. So you're there mainly, uh, you know, especially in the morning at the, at the front and then kind of watch things develop during the day? Yeah. Yep. And, you know, like I said, be, be present, be there for, for everyone to see me, come to me if, if needed. But then also if, if something were to occur, you know, like a, a minor violation, I'm there kind of to consult with the principals to see if this is something that is more than just a school consequence. It may result in, in a, you know, an ordinance violation or something like that. Having an officer such as you in the school, that's uh, it's new to Richland Center, but it's pretty common now uh, everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yep. Uh, I think I was told everyone in the Richland Center School District Conference has an officer. And actually, um, I met with the River Valley uh, School District Officer for Spring Green PD, Andy Couric, who has been a school resource officer for a long time, I believe over 20 years, and then Officer Pepper with uh, Dodgeville Police Department. 
we had a, a meeting at the River Valley Schools, and I found it to be very informative, and I was glad to be able to meet with those guys for advice on, on the school year. I think uh, parents and, you know, guardians, everybody in the district can feel a little more comfortable knowing that there's, you know, that, that you're there, right? Yeah, I hope so. You know, um, I touched on the maintain safety and security of the buildings, and that's, you know, referencing any possible active threats, you know, that ha- has happened and has happened in our area. Um, nothing quicker for a response than an officer to actually be actually be there at the school to well, stop any threat. When you heard about the position, I mean, is this something that you, you, you look forward to, that you, you seeked out, or is it something that, uh, you, you know, it took a little while to decide you wanted to do this? Uh, well, when the position became uh, something that was looking more like it was going to happen, I, I did develop more and more interest. Um, I became a police officer because I really enjoyed that community interaction. And, you know, maybe I, I didn't get as much of that working nights and didn't see as many people as, as I could have on, on this position. So really having that interaction with community and being able to talk with people more is, is really something that I enjoy and really the reason why I got into it. So I'm guessing the staff appreciates uh, having you around. Yeah, I, I think so. They're all, like I said, very welcoming. And, and yeah, they, they do come to me for, for um, advice or, or, you know, um, the teacher came to me for a situation where maybe making her room a little safer if they do go into a lockdown uh, situation. Uh, Chief Billy Jones has been great about uh, informing the district on uh, active threats and and how to overcome that and protect themselves. But I think also having somebody available all the time is definitely a, a positive for them as well. How often do you have uh, like the the drills or you know some of those things? So last school year, being part of the Richland uh, special response team, I assisted in one of the drills. Uh, I believe we only had one last year. Uh, we intend on having one again this year, but it hasn't been scheduled yet. But I know that most staff really do appreciate that and getting those reps in for if the time hopefully never happens, but if it would, to be prepared for that. Do students come to you and ask you for help on their homework or not? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that'd be their, their best person to ask, but certainly if they did, I'd do my best. Yeah, Absolutely. So I'm guessing you've had some situations now where, you know, I mean, kids are, you know, you're kind of building that trust. That's probably one of the big things early, isn't it? Yeah, just having having communication there and, and, and getting to know everyone. Um, you know, I actually attended Richland Center High School, I think, it, what is it, 17 years ago? So there's only a, a handful of uh, familiar faces, but it's also nice to see all the all the new staff there as well. Um, and, yeah, it's been a good good thing. Good deal. Why do you think a program like the PEAT program Elizabeth talked about is important? Well, getting getting the those young students informed uh, right away is important, uh, making good good decisions and and being aware of, of what's out there and staying away from it and having it come from a reputable source like Officer Dialhoff is, is better than maybe, you know, some some not so reputable sources that they might come in contact with throughout their school year. One of the things I thought about as Elizabeth was talking was uh, the whole the, the whole vaping thing. And I mean I guess that's that's been kind of been kind of an epidemic, hasn't it? Yeah, unfortunately it is. Uh, we have had some uh, vaping uh, in the high school. Um, we do have programs in place to, to kind of help counteract that, if you will, with the Crime Stoppers Quick 50 uh, that has been active at the school and students have been made aware of that and has been a good thing as well. Sometimes, I mean, they can disguise it so well. I mean, it's hard to detect, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's it's so small and so con- concealable that it's, you know, it's hard to actually catch somebody with that, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's so bad for you and bad for your health, especially as a, a young person. To start that at an early age is is very bad for your health. Yeah, no doubt about it. So that's why we got to get the word out, right, Elizabeth? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the weeks in the four-week program that we have is primarily on vaping and addiction. And so we're going to talk about what the components of a vape are and how those can affect your body and your brain development and your lung development and things like that. Because when you're in sixth grade, you're still developing. Um, you know, so if you start putting some of those more harmful things into your body, it affects your ability to develop properly um, because most 
people aren't fully developed until they're like mid 20s so you know if you're starting at 12 13 like that's definitely going to have an impact on how your brain develops and things like that and he was talking about you know or you guys were talking about dis- disguising um the, va- the vapes and and different types of drugs and one of the things that the partners for prevention has on their website is a hidden in plain sight um educational video it's like a virtual classroom and it does go over um different hiding places or different ways to conceal and that's mostly for a a parent tool right so that they can go to the partners for prevention and here in richland county and they can um look in the resources tab on that website and they can find you know addiction resources and um mental health resources that the partners for prevention have already put together and then this hidden classroom is in there as well okay so the course is uh, you said four weeks four weeks yep so we we do like um, introduction with the officer and uh, drug and alcohol and tobacco education the first week, vaping and addiction week two. Week three is given the students tools. You know, we talk about influences, positive and negative, and different activities they can do that are safe, legal, and fun. Um, we talk about consequences, you know, so if you're caught with a, a vape, right, um, you could get a ticket, we could take your vape, we're calling mom and dad, different things like that. Um, we also relate it back to um, school consequences, so that, you know, if you don't do your homework, you could get a bad grade. You know, so make it more relatable if they're not using those things. If you don't do your homework, you could fail your class. And then um, we talk about alternatives. So making a a better decision than choosing to use the tobacco, alcohol, or, or, or hurt somebody. You know, if you're in a verbal argument with somebody, you can step away. You don't have to engage with them. So, yeah. And then week four is review jeopardy style so we created a jeopardy well it's interactive and it's fun you know Mm -hmm. so you know we give them the answer and then with jeopardy you have to come up with the question Ah, Mm -hmm. so kind of a game show at the end yeah just just something fun to you know remind the kids that we're we are about education and we we do take our job seriously and we want them to get the most out of it but we like to have fun too Great. We'll have a final word on the morning show about these programs we're talking about here with Jared Wilson and Elizabeth Deidelhoff from Richland Center PD, and we'll be back in just a moment. Our morning show time on WRCO Radio uh, gives us a, a few final words today from our guests, Jared Wilson and Elizabeth Deidelhoff, about uh, the things that they have coming up here. We wanted to talk, Jared, uh, with you because uh, Richland Center Police Department has a number of things going on during the month of October, doesn't it? Yeah, so, you know, Halloween's getting close, so we have a few events for that. Uh, we have Trick or Treat Trail in the Park uh, put together by the City of Richland Center. That is Friday, October 27th from 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And that'll be on the Rotary Lights path. I am going to attend, and I think I'm probably going to dress up like a police officer for that one. And And then uh, the next event, uh, Trick or Treat at the American Legion on October 28th. I don't have the times readily available right now, but uh, Officer Shaylin Isaacson of the police department will be there with K-9 Lucy, and they're going to be doing a, a demonstration. And then lastly, on October 28th, we will be hosting the drug take back at the Richland Center Police Department. Detective Pilla will be there, as well as members of Partners for Prevention to accept all your old prescription medications that you no longer need or use. That's been very successful in the past, hasn't it? It has, yeah. I, I, it, it surprises me every, every time how much uh, prescription medication we take in and box up and take to Madison, I believe is where it goes ultimately, but yeah. Do you do that twice a year, the drug drug take back? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the second one, the last one of the year then. I believe so. And you said the 28th of October. That's correct. Yep. It's usually a most all day uh, activity to where we accept them. We'll, we'll mark that on the calendar then, too. So um, certainly some good times, but some good uh, reminders throughout the year. And then uh, at the high school, are you involved in anything there in terms of uh, anything coming up there? Well, we just completed our homecoming week. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a mostly successful week without any real major issues. Um, I did attend the homecoming dance as well, and that went very well as well. Very well-behaved students last week. Well, that's good. 
Good, yeah. good to hear that. So yeah. I think it's always somewhat of a relief, though, for everybody involved when homecoming is done and, and everybody is safe, right? Right. Yeah, there were you know always lots of activities, lots of stuff going on, but ultimately a safe, good week. Yeah. And I'm guessing it's 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 fun, but it's also probably kind of hard to come back to your alma mater sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 a little bit. Uh-huh. It's, uh, you know, um, I forget about what activities we actually did do, but, you know, reminded throughout the week, uh, one thing that stuck out that I kind of forgot about were uh, class skits. And something that I was surprised with was um, everybody had a cell phone, you know, on stage. And it just, you know, everyone has one now, obviously. But thinking back to when I was in high school, that definitely wasn't something I was used to seeing on stage as a, or as a prop or to try to remember their lines, for instance. I know. Isn't it something how it's changed? Now, did you get uh, parody? Did anybody play you in any of the skits or not? No. Oh, they no, didn't. they didn't. I was kind of watching for it, but, uh, <laughs> you know, a few teachers and I think Principal Lemke and Principal Perkins were fell victim to uh, a couple of characters on stage. Sure. Well, maybe next year. You've only been there a few weeks, right? Fingers so. crossed. <laughs> Elizabeth, uh, anything that you wanted to add here at the, uh, the end of the program? I uh, just wanted to add that uh, we will be in the classroom uh, starting on Monday. Uh, so the first section of the program will kick off on Monday. Um, I believe myself and C.R.O. Wilson, who is still kind of learning the ropes with the program, um, are going to be in the classroom. So we'll teach um, two in the fall here, and then we'll teach the remaining three sections, the last two at the intermediate school and St. Mary's sections in the spring. And then our hope is to do some sort of uh, celebration, uh, and that'll go home with the parents of the sixth grade class so that they can join in, in celebrating their student in complete the program. If parents have questions, uh, is there a good way that they can check in on it? Yeah, so they, they will all get a copy of my business card, which will have my, my email and the police department phone number on it. Um, but if they need to call, uh, our emails are on the city website as well. Um, but it's Deidelhoff at rcpolice.net. And then the phone number to the police department is 608-647-2103. And they can just ask the two secretaries for my voicemail and they'll send it right through. Good. And your your regular job when you're not in the classroom, uh, you're serving our community. Uh, yep, work and patrol in the afternoon. So if you see me out, don't be don't be a stranger. Wave hi, and um, you know I, my hand never gets tired of going up and waving hi to people. So um, just like uh, Sierra Wilson said, you know we are a police department about community, and we we hope that this program can help continue to build that uh, community relationship with everybody in the community. Great. Well, thanks uh, for all you do, both of you. We appreciate it. Thank you for having us. You Thank bet. you. We're very fortunate to have you in the community and, and feel safer as a result. So, Jared Wilson, CRO officer, and also Elizabeth Deidelhoff, officer with the Richland Center Police Department on today's morning show.